Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I am here with another meeting rooms question. So this meeting rooms question is a follow-up question to the previous meeting room question. If you haven't seen or done the previous meeting rooms question, I highly recommend you to take a look at that video before looking at this video. I'll put the link to that video up left or right, I don't know yet. But without further ado, let's get started. This question is very similar to the previous meeting rooms question. For this question, we're gonna find the minimum number of meeting rooms required for all the meetings. Say if all the meeting times are not overlapped with each other, then we could just use one meeting room. But if there is an overlap, that means we'll have to add one more meeting rooms to the total meeting rooms being used. To find the minimum number, what we need to do is to try to reuse those meeting rooms as much as possible. How do you check whether a meeting room is reusable? Well, we could basically just look in at the meeting rooms that are in use already and see the meetings that has occurred in those meeting rooms, whether they have ended or not. If one of the meetings has already ended, that means that meeting room is available for another use. What's the best way to find whether there is a meeting room that's available to reuse? The solution is to use a min heap. In the min heap, we're gonna store the end time of the meetings that are already using some rooms. So whenever you're looking at a new meeting, what you need to do is to compare the top element in that min heap with the start time of your current meeting. If your start time of the current meeting is later than the top element in the min heap, that means that room is available to use for your current meeting. Now let's take a look at an example. Say if you're given an array of meeting time intervals of 0 to 30, 5 to 10, and 15 to 20 and you want to find the minimum number of conference rooms required, the first thing that we need to do is to sort these time intervals by their start time. So once they're sorted, what we need to do is to create a min heap. Let's call it rooms used. And in the min heap, we're gonna store the end time of the first meeting so in this case, we're going to store 30 in the min heap. And then we're going to move on to the second meeting in the input array, which is the 510 meeting. And we're going to compare the start time of the current meeting that we're looking at with the top element in the min heap. So the top element in the min heap currently is 30 and 30 is greater than 5, which means the 0 to 30 meeting is still happening in the meeting room and we can't reuse the meeting room for our 5 to 10 meeting. We're gonna add another meeting room for our 5 to 10 meeting. And we need to push the end time of the current meeting into the min heap as well. So the current end time is 10, so we're gonna push that into the heap which the heap will turn into 1030. And then let's move on to the next time interval, which is the 15 to 21. And we're gonna compare the start time of the current time interval, which is 15. We're gonna compare it with the top element in the heap, which is 10 in this case. And we see that 10 is less than 15, which means that meeting room is clear for use, so we don't need to add another meeting room for our 15 to 20 meeting. We could reuse that meeting room. So we pop the 10 out, meaning that we're gonna reuse the meeting room, and we push the 20, which is the end time of the current meeting, into the heap. So the current heap is gonna be 20, 30. And now we're at the end of the array. We've looped through all the elements in the time intervals. 
we're gonna count how many elements left in the min heap. And we see there's two. That means we only used two meeting rooms for all the meetings. And now let's start coding um, our solution. So the first thing that we need to check is to check whether the intervals is valid. If it is not, then we just return zero because if you don't have any meetings, you don't really need to assign any meeting rooms. The next thing we need to do is to sort the intervals. So intervals dot sort key equals and we're only sorting it by the start time and after that we're going to create a rooms used min heap and we're going to insert or push the end time of the first meeting into our min heap and here we're going to use a built-in library called heap q and we're going to call heap push on rooms used. We're going to push the first meeting's end time. So after that, we're going to loop from index equals one to the end of the intervals. And we're going to compare the top element from our min heap and see whether it's less than or equal to our current meeting's start time. So if the rooms use top element is less than or equal to the current meeting's start time, that means the rooms used meeting is already done, so we could reuse that room. So we don't need to add another room. We could just delete that meeting from that room and then push our current meeting into that room. So we're gonna do heap pod, also from rooms used, and then we have to push our current meeting times end time into the heap so that later on we would know when this meeting would end for this room. So when this room is going to be available for future uses. So heap queue, heap push into rooms used with our current intervals and time. And now at the end of the solution, we're going to return the length of our heap. So that would contain, that would be the number, that would be the minimum number of conference rooms that we have used for these meetings. All right, so that is the code for this question. Now let's take a look at the runtime and the space complexity. For the runtime, since we're doing a min heap, which is priority queue, so when you're inserting it, it needs to sort the current elements in the heap. So that would be a big O of and log n runtime. And we're also looping through every element in the intervals. That's gonna be big O of n runtime. So in total, this question would require a runtime of big O of n log n. And for space complexity, since we're storing the rooms that's being used in the min heap, 
if all the meetings are overlapped with each other, that means we'll have n rooms being used. So the worst case, the rooms used is going to contain n elements. So the space complexity for this question would be big O of n. So that's it for today's meeting rooms question. I really hope you have tried actually coding this L on your own because you know practice makes perfect and you need to do it. I need to learn by doing it. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you think it's helpful and feel free to leave any comments down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye!